Hi, I'm Maya, a software engineer on the Telegraph team at Influx Data. And I'm Brian, Director of IoT and Emerging Technology, also at Influx Data. And today we're going to talk about MQTT and InfluxDB. We sure are. So what is MQTT and how does it work? Well, MQTT is part of what you would call a machine-to-machine -machine architecture. It is a broker, like, like a lot of other brokers, um, and it works on a pub-sub model. So what that means is that one machine, say if you're managing a fleet of wind turbines, which have sensors for things like wind speed and power, those machines can easily publish data to topics. So for example, wind speed could get published to topic A, and power could get published to topic B. Now that broker holds that data temporarily so that other machines, like another turbine, could actually reach in and grab that data on what the wind speed was or what that wind speed was generating in terms of power on the other machine. It gets really interesting because you can have many, many, many of these topics. So how does InfluxDB fit into the IoT architecture with MQTT brokers? It's Cool because it's in two ways. Number one, there isn't a great sort of persistence strategy for MQTT. So you can always sort of sit in FluxDB right next to your MQTT broker. And it, just like a turbine, can subscribe to any of those topics just as if it was another machine. By doing so, it'll grab the data, it can timestamp it, and then it'll put it in the database as a, as a time series or of historical data. The, what gets really cool though is you can actually then use our Flux time series processing language, and actually run queries, say minimums, maximums, averages for hours, days, or weeks. And then Flux can actually post that data back to a topic on the MQTT broker. And that will allow those machines, all of the turbines, to access that data as part of their own automation. That sounds super powerful. It is super powerful. But like a lot of things that are super powerful, it also can tend to be a little bit complex. So why don't you drill down a little bit on how that all works? Absolutely. I put together a simple example here so you can show how to set up your data. We have a wind sensor and a power sensor like you were talking yep. about before, publishing to an MQTT broker. Yep. Telegraph will then subscribe to that broker, send your data to InfluxDB, and sort it into the proper buckets as we have wind Very and cool. power. How does that work? You're gonna start with the inputs.mqtt consumer plugin. Point it at your server, in our case, localhost, which is also where our MQTT broker lives. Okay. You're going to subscribe to your topic for your broker and specify your data format. In our case, for simplicity, we're using Influx Line Protocol. Makes sense. Other data formats like JSON are supported. Oh, wow. That's good. Where things get fun is we have two InfluxDB outputs. We have our URLs, which again is localhost. The tokens, which you'll get when you set up your InfluxDB buckets, mm -hmm. your organization name, and then you have name pass and bucket. Name pass is going to ensure that any metric with the name wind is going to make it into the bucket wind. So your wind metrics go to your wind bucket, yep. your power metrics go to your power bucket. That's fantastic. And then all of the developers can just access that data right in InfluxDB for what they're delivering to their own consumers. Absolutely. You can then use Flux to query your data out of InfluxDB, right. publish it back to your MQTT broker. That's right. And then those machines can use that data again as well. Exactly. I hope this helped. I can't wait to see what you built. <laughs>